Snap's Just Got Paid is such an awesome song, it totally kicks ass even without that epic slide solo. And it is an easy progression that you can start spicing up with those caged chords I showed you in Open D in the past couple of videos, which of course you can find on my channel or with that link somewhere up here. Anyway, the original song is in the key of E, but we are gonna play in Open D, so in the key of D. And the chord progression in Open D for Just Got Paid is a D. C and then later an F and a G. So these are the basic chords and I trust you were able to learn the riff from uh, from the intro. I tabbed it out there. So basically uh, the first thing you can do is uh, is add a G chord and share the bar of the C chord with the G chord like Joe Bonamassa does like this. So basically the verse progression would be a full measure of uh, D, half measure of C, half measure of G. And that way it's already a bit more exciting. But we are still using those big barred E shape chords. So the first thing I like to change is the C chord and use the C shape C chord easy enough. Which looks like this. So basically I start out by a big just open string D chord syncopated and then usually I add a lick like something like this. So I just add a short lick to, to spice up the chord but other than that it's just the six chord six strings open. I go to the C shape C and I usually slide up for the uh, E shape G to the fifth fret. But I don't have to do that, I can go down for the G shape G after the C. So basically, what I do is just an open D chord, C shape C chord, and G shape G chord. That's straightforward. Well, I can play around with these shapes because obviously having the slide on one of my fingers, I only have three free fingers to, to fret a triad. And the most obvious one in C is obviously this. So the just the C E G, which is the C triad. But you can shuffle it around to, to play something like this that would be a CGC. And then if you lower your pinky and middle finger by, uh, by one fret, you get the G inversion. And uh, if I do this, I like to start a progression with a D-shaped D chord. So not just all the open strings, but I go for the D-shape, which looks like this. So this is an easy way to start out by, uh, by thinking in the caged shapes with this progression. The good thing with these chords that they are kind of full sounding because uh, you can basically just play any well, D triad inversion all over the neck because you have your D bass note. So if you are the only rhythm instrument you can, you can still give a solid foundation of tonality for, for your chord for the D but you can't do it for the or it's way harder to do for the C and the G that's why you ideally would want like a strong bass note and with the C shape you got the C right here and actually with the G shape you, you got a B note so you don't have the G in the root that's why I usually like to do the the E shape bar the G 
because that has a lot of G's in them. Anyway, when I'm playing the song, I like to mix up these shapes. So if I play like five verses, I'm not playing the same thing for each and every one of them. So I think it's, it's a good idea to start out with that familiar sound of uh, the bar chord. Or maybe on like... First, play something that's really easy and pleasing to the ear and then change around for something a bit more complicated, more spicy. And there's another shape I like to throw in there. Basically, you can either look it as a, a G or an A shape. So this is just... Let's call it the G shape because of the third in the bass. But again, I'm starting with the, the open D chord. So this is just a, a more like an arpeggiating way. What I wanted to, to mention earlier is that if you're not the only backup instrument, you can play with different triad inversions like So this is a D shape D triad. This is an A shape C triad. This is a G triad in the D shape, so it's the same shape. And then you can come up with the E shape D. Or you can start up here with the D, C, G, D. And then you can proceed by So this is a fun way of utilizing some of the triads, uh, but it, it wouldn't really work if no one plays bass or like the backup chords for you. So if, uh, if you're the only backup instrument, <laughs> don't really do this, or uh, of course you can try, but, uh, but you probably would sound more like a ukulele than, than like a big fat resonator. I hope I gave you a few ideas how you can utilize all five caged chord shapes in a progression like this, because we've actually looked at all five of them. We haven't looked at all the chords in all five shapes, but that's something that you can try doing on your own. I would also encourage you to try to come up with different triad inversions in the chord shapes. I only showed you the ones I like best. So this is how I like to play. Uh, just got paid by ZZ Top. And the last thing I wanted to mention regarding the progression is that I actually like to play the F and the G chord with that big E shape bar with the slide. To me, that's, uh, that's the most pleasing to my ears. That's full sending resolution to the verse. So I like to keep it that way, but you can of course change around those two chords, play around with different shapes, come up with your own version. If you wanna learn more about the open the caged system. I have a couple of videos, as I mentioned previously in this video, you can find them on my channel and all the supporting material tabs are uh, downloadable for free on my Facebook page. So maybe even check that out too. And thank you for watching.